Hello my friends, Flip here, and welcome on back to the Hardcore Minecraft World. Today, my friends, we are starting out with the very sad news of our friend Joel has perished inside of this world. We've lost our buddy. We're the only one left alive. Well, no, that's not quite true. Scott is still alive and CPK is still alive. However, we got a little bit of a change here that we're going to be doing. And a great thing that we can do while talking about that one is we're actually going to be flying over to Joel's base right now because he said I could raid everything and take everything I want. And I think we're going to have to give his friends a new home and everything like that. It's going to be absolutely fantastic, but we've got a little bit of flying to do. And the flying now is going to be much, much smoother because, well, folks, I've decided or we've decided as a group to take this into single player worlds for ourselves. Scott figured that his series wasn't doing the best, so he decided to stop his. And CPK and I, unfortunately, with our recording schedules, is uh, we have not had time to interact with each other at all yet. He finishes recording for the day before I even wake up. So the point of us playing on a server together, we never really have the chance to interact. So we both decided to take this into our own single player worlds and do our own thing from there. And that means that I no longer have to deal with insane lag inside of this world. And I'm so very excited for that. I'm going to be missing Joel for sure here. But now the fact that we aren't lagging anymore is, uh, I don't know if it's a great trade off or not, but I'm pretty happy about it which i guess leads me to believe at this point in time we need a new name for this series i guess because hashtag not an smp well technically it's not an smp anymore because this is hosted on my own computer uh so anybody got any ideas on that front and while you are down there folks please be sure to click that like button if you're excited for more hardcore episodes but let's get over to joel's base Joel hasn't even been dead long enough for the campfires to go out and the chimney smoke to be stopping over here, but it's time for us to uh, loot all the stuff and take everything we want, right? Yeah, that's a great idea. Let's do it. I do want to come back over here and see if we can't rehome some of his pets to give them a much more uh, nice place to live instead of the place where their owner died. So Shrek Paul Milk will be coming back for you, buddy. And I don't know now that he's gone. Can we tell Freddy to... No, we can't make Freddy not sit. Oh, Freddy, I'm sorry, buddy. You're going to be staring forever at that staircase. Hoping Joel's going to be walking down. I'm sorry. I know it. It's okay to cry. It's okay to cry. Now, goodies, however. Iron sounds great. More iron and some diamonds. Look at that. Oh, it's so great. And I'm taking my gold back. I've come to the realization at this point in time that Joel and I are very different Minecraft players. I, on one hand, am a hoarder. Every time I can get more resources, I hold on to them always, and I will always overgather resources for myself. Joel, on the other hand, is not at all. <laughs> he will, it seems that he only gathers, gathers resources when he knows he needs to build something using those resources, uh, because there's not much around here at all. I am hopeful that the iron farm has a little bit of iron inside of it, because that's gonna help us out a lot with building a storage room. And not really. I really shouldn't be complaining. It's a stack and a half of blocks of iron almost that I did not have beforehand that I now do have because my friend died. Wow, yeah, that's kind of morbid. Okay. I, I He never really realized the sweet berries that we're planting around his base were from us. So that's a bummer. Our prank uh, did not last long enough to actually see Joel notice those, which is a huge bummer. But there's some... And oh my gosh, his base actually looks really, really cool. I know he has that desert village around here somewhere. I just don't know where it is. I think it's that direction. I do see some desert, so maybe it is over here. Let's see. I kind of want to check it out. I've actually never seen this place before. I've seen his videos on it, and it looks so cool that I have to come over here and see it. Of course, it's not mob safe on the inside. Uh, can we just sleep here first? Yes. And it's also not mob safe on the outside, I guess. All right. Ooh, having no lag when fighting creepers. Oh, that's the best. Oh, it's the best. This actually looks insane. Oh, I love this. Oh, this has turned out so well. That's such a bummer he wasn't able to finish the project. Oh, I love this. That archway though. Oh my gosh, is there light in there? No, there's not. I've never really used warped wood before. and This looks fantastic. Oh my gosh, did he put any villagers in here? I don't think he had the time. I think he was working towards building a villager breeder before um uh, the end happened to him. Um, Yeah, it looks fantastic though. Look at all these lecterns, holy cow. No loots for us to steal around here, but that is a really, really cool build to check out. Now, my friends, it's time that we get back over to the base because I've got something very, very big that I've been spending a while working on on the streams over the last few weeks. And, well, I want to show it to y'all what we got going on here. So, my friends, let's go ahead and kick this off into good old-fashioned time-lapse mode from footage I recorded a week ago. And I'll catch y'all up on what's going on. 
Terraforming has to be one of my absolute favorite things to do inside of this game. So today we are starting a brand new mountain project. I love building mountains. I think it's so fun to work with the height inside of Minecraft and not just building a giant cube of a redstone build or a mob farm or something like that. So I want to make some really cool looking mountains up here and transform the regular vanilla Minecraft mountains that we have into something absolutely amazing. A little bit inspired by actually Mount Baker in the Pacific Northwest where I live nearby, we're going to be kind of taking a little bit of the concepts and elements of that mountain incorporating into this real or this Minecraft mountain that we're going to be building here based off of the real one, which is my own inspiration of it. Obviously, I grew up going over there and seeing in the distance my entire life and I absolutely love it. So we're going to be using that as a little bit of inspiration for the build. Whenever you're doing terraforming or anything like that, I always recommend having some sort of inspiration here. And the way that we're going to be building these mountains, as you can see so far, is we're getting a few general guidelines in of kind of creating a spider web in the sky up here of just different areas that we can use to create lines that'll help us start to define the shape, the different slopes and everything that we're working on. And yes, for the first time ever, the mountains that I'm going to be building are going to be having a back to them. It's amazing. I know it's absolutely insane. And so bringing in a few more peaks around here, there's going to be three or four different peaked areas with one large major mountain at the top. As you can kind of see the shape of this one coming in here, this is going to be a project that's going to take quite a while to do as we're going to need thousands upon thousands of resources between snow, dirt, stone, etc., to be able to do the thing. But it's so cool. And here we are coming back to our base and you can see the mountain framework that we we're able to build up there and it's looking absolutely insane. Up here at the top, I believe we are all the way up to 200 height level or something like that. And I'm so very excited to get everything here built out and finished up and do all these things. This is kind of going to be my stream project for the month of December. I've decided that I want to spend a lot of time working on this thing, making it look absolutely amazing and just having so very much fun with it. And once we finish this, I'm actually going to build like a bluff or plateau right in this area. Basically, along where that boardwalk goes is I want to turn it into a little bit of a cliffy bit coming up towards us or almost actually, I guess, right back to where those guys are. And we're going to build a bit of a fortress or a castle over there if we survive that long. And I think it's going to be absolutely awesome. On top of that, we're torching everything below it. Yes, yes, I'm still flip. And yes, I'm lighting up the area below my mountain range. It's fine. Yes, it's actually the thing that we're going to be doing today because, well, we have the creeper farm right down there. And if we didn't light this area up, the creeper farm is going to be very, very ineffective. And that would really suck. So <laughs> it's something that we got to do here. And it hopefully shouldn't be too terrible. But now speaking of things that hopefully shouldn't be too terrible is I want to build a storage room. We haven't had an actual storage room inside this world and you all have been harping on me like crazy to get one built up here. So today we're going to be working towards building up the storage room. I was watching a mumbo video recently where he was talking about just doing like a big old grindy project. Sometimes you log in your Minecraft world and you're like, I want to build pretty things. Sometimes you log in, you're like, I want to go exploring. And other times you're like, you know what I want to do? Just break a bunch of blocks. And well, I want to break a bunch of blocks. I've got to figure out a spot around here where we're going to be building up the storage room. And I'm so very excited for it. So, so folks, without any further ado, let's go ahead and kick this off one more time in a good old fashioned time lapse mode and dig a big hole. It took me quite a while here to find the right spot for this build for ourselves because I wanted to make sure we had the right area for it. I wasn't going to run into anything between our slime farm, the elevator you can see in the background, or the creeper farm, or any of those things that we're building down here, which we're actually kind of dangerously close to all of them, but I think this is going to work out really, really well, and honestly might be able to activate all of our farms while we're standing inside this place. So we cleared out a giant hole underground without a beacon, I might add, and I've decided to write FWIP in the ground in like these very cool pixel arty letters, which we're going to be using for something later. But that's kind of a general idea that I had in mind. After that, we got a bunch of chests in here and started prepping up the area for a lot of redstone around the side with those little cubbies that you can see there, which we're coming back in and filling up with item sorters that we're going to be setting up here very soon. We just need a lot of iron for hoppers because it's uh, it's a big one. This right here is really showing why we need a storage room. And uh, I went back over to Joel's base and for some reason he had left a random chest with another like 30 something blocks of iron. So we got all of that stuff. I've made a bunch of chests here for ourselves and uh, I don't think it's enough. We're going to find out and see how many we can get out of this one here. I used it all. We have 15 iron left to our name. That's three more hoppers. Wait, we could do this maybe. <laughs> 
I'm smelting away a bunch of glass so we can make these item transportation ducts here soon as well. But I want to show you all how we've been getting down into the storage room. Right now, it doesn't have a very great entrance to it. I've actually been using our library to just slide right on down here. And into the caves, it's just right beyond our zombie conversion chamber with old Jeremy down there. We've come in right down this direction. And then this is how we're getting into the storage room. I'm going to come up with a better way of maybe we can drop right down here or something from above or even maybe right down into there where it's just going to have it like a flat door. They can drop us all the way down here and I guess I should explain what we're doing. So it's going to be a staircase leading its way down here. I just kind of want to start breaking blocks and I forgot to really bring y'all in and really communicate too much about what's going on. Then this little bit of diorite strip right here is actually going to be a three by three piston door, which we'll set up in the future. Today is all about making this area functional down here. So you can see along the back end, we have all these item transportation things. I'll show you all how those work when we're getting the hoppers inside of here. But this just goes all the way along. It was so much stuff. What I got to do now with all of these hoppers is run along the back of every single one of these chests and place a hopper down. Unfortunately, that was not nearly enough hoppers for ourselves. It needs to make it all the way around here. And we stopped right at the bottom layer in there. So I've got to somehow get enough iron to be able to fill all of those in there, which is quite a lot. I think what I'm going to do here is go ahead and just AFK at Joel's iron farm for a little bit and get a few more resources collected for ourselves so we can really start moving things around. I need to get some packed ice in here as well. I think I might be able to scavenge some for now. We can finish at least the water pipe system that I have in mind because I want to show y'all how that one's going to work. Up here at the ice farm now, we should be able to just break down quite a bit of stuff. I don't need too much packed ice. We just need a little bit to keep some items moving through some water streams that we're going to use here. And the reason why we use ice is you can see here on the grass block, we throw it, the item sticks right there. But if we throw it on top of the ice block, take two. If we can throw it on top of the ice block right like that, you can see it skids across. The more packed the ice is, so ice versus packed ice versus blue ice increases the amount of slipperiness on it. So we can use a bunch of packed ice right there. And honestly, 12 might be enough. But let's make, I think we might, let's go with 15 just to be safe. Back down underground in the storage room now. We will fix the lighting situation down here soon enough, but I want to show you how this thing will work in theory. So what we want to start with is bringing a bunch of our light blue stained glass right along here. And then at this point, we're going to need another one. But inside of here is where we're actually going to be throwing that packed ice block right like that, right in there. So that that means the items can keep skidding across this point, because what we're going to do is if we do that on here and we create another one right in there, then we can bring in a water bucket like this. And that's just going to move everything down that way. So I can't actually test this right now to show you all. But trust me on this one, if we throw an item in here, if it doesn't get picked up by any of these hoppers, like we have the stone right in there, it would keep going on down that direction. If we were to put a water source right here without this little wooden slab in the way right like that, it would also flow backwards. So they won't be able to do a continuous loop for ourselves. And then I wanted to, with all of this light blue stained glass that we have, make it feel like we have some tubes across the wall up here. So I want to stretch them across this entire way as well. And that right here is starting to look really, really cool. I decided to leave the glass off the top until we get the filter system set up in there because there's a little bit more work we got to do with them. But that's something we can deal with here in a little while. What I wanted to do was actually come over here with some soul sand. And we have this little bit of a doorway here, right? And this is where something might be a little interesting and might um, cause an issue or two. I'm hoping I can make this work somehow. I don't know how quite yet, but I'm hoping I can figure it out somehow without completely crowding the doorway. I think right now I actually need to bring him all the way out to here with a packed ice and then that would go up and then we would have it fall right back down at this point. And we can have a water source on there. They'll start taking him down the next way, which is unfortunate because that's going to make this kind of awkwardly shaped in here because we could bring in the blue stained glass that we have right like that and that could work. Looking at it from down here, it's a little interesting looking. So what I think I might do is actually extend it just back out to being that same width. So it's all even across the board. And I think that might be a better way to go. So we could actually do that right there. Then we're going to just need for now, let's just do a dummy block of a piece of stone. And under here, we could have some spruce logs that we can strip down. So it looks like it's part of the design. And voila. That's actually okay looking. It kind of has that archway feel to it that I want. Honestly, acacia trap doors might work a little bit better. And I really hate this stone block being right here. So let's just go ahead and throw a spruce log in there too. So it's more consistent going all the way up. 
and that should take it all the way up there and then things could plop back down and move on further this direction which right now is pretty much peaked out to the point where we have all the, the hoppers through so i'll tell you what folks i think i might have a little bit more iron in here and then it's time to go do that afk session at joel's we've got a little over two stacks of iron ore right there to get it all in perfect all right, i've been working on getting in the roof a little bit further and i actually got all of the hoppers in place everything here set up had to afk for about like six hours over at his place to get enough iron so i think definitely we're going to be building our own iron farm here in the future i also set up a little bit of a system back here where we can load items into this i believe hopefully it'll work i don't want to test it right now because we haven't set up any of the sorters but it should send them up there's a little bit of a bubble elevator system right back there put them up and put them in the water stream right up there and then they'll flow all the way around forever and forever and we really got to start getting filters in here before we do anything, because unfortunately, uh, this system's only really going to work when everything is set up. So as it would be, let's keep ignoring that. What I've got set up over here is we've got some cobblestone going flat around the entire edge. And then coming up into here, we're starting to bring these up and create almost like a hanger shape for ourselves. So it's two slabs, two full blocks, two slabs, and then five full blocks, and then bringing it back down, doing the same pattern there. Now I just need to come through these areas and do it along the rest of them here too. I got the wooden beams in place, so those are looking absolutely fancy. And now I just got to get in the rest of this cobblestone. I've switched over to a regular pick so I can actually get some cobblestone back as we're going and just filter it out. Then on top of that, here in the center, I have an idea for a big glass art piece, which is going to be incorporating the whip that is cut out into the stone there. But that's something we're going to be tackling later. I just don't think I have the time for it today, but I thought some jungle wood as a bit of a border to it would be a really, really cool element to add in so i was thinking we could just do jungle wood stretching around this entire area about two thirds of the way done with the ceiling now and once we remove the torches in here it's going to be extremely dark so i'm gonna get the last little bit of cobblestone in over here and then i want to go find some chains and lanterns and see if we can't hang them down from those at least from the spruce beams themselves and see if we can't get some really cool interest to it this is one of those tasks where I wish I had thought about this beforehand so I could have broken the blocks down and placed the ceiling in before I dug the entire chamber down here because then we wouldn't have to do these little pillars up, walking around a little bitty scaffolding bits all over the place and uh, so far it's, it's working out okay. This is definitely starting to feel like a bit of an airplane hangar down here that's very, very industrial and I like it a lot. I think what I'm gonna start with is this chest right here is gonna be where we have a bunch of cobblestone. We're probably gonna do two or three rows for cobblestone because we're getting so much of it so let's just cram everything in there for now the one unfortunate thing i'm realizing right now is in order to make this so oh, we have 28 chains perfect i was gonna say in order to make these we need chains which require iron do i have any more it looks like just the 28 which you know should be enough added in the lanterns with the chains hanging on them and i think that's looking pretty magical here and then i had these shroom lights and i had an idea here folks what if we brought shroom lights in along this entire place here underneath and that would help to light up the chests and the surrounding area and kind of highlight the bit of the blue we have up there with everything going on and i think it looked really cool i only have three but the shroom lights look really really cool like that maybe i'm gonna have to stretch it around this entire way a quick trip to the nether and we might get lucky 17 shroom lights any more there not quite we've got to go ahead and find that shroom light forest or forest with trees out here and get a few more of them which I believe there actually is one right over here around the corner. Yes, there is, but it's definitely the one I've already been raiding. So, uh, oopsies. I'm just going to run around and niche the little shroom lights out of these because I don't think we need everything. I gotta say though, I do wish when you started to chop these trees down out here that the warp blocks themselves being the warped warp block would actually despawn when the stem of the tree was gone because wow, these things get a little annoying to chop down after a while when you don't need any of those. Outside of a building block, can somebody tell me what the purpose of these things is? I feel like I just never have used them besides maybe some bone meal generators. Holy mackerel, that's a, uh, that's a big warp forest over here. This should definitely be able to get us all the shroom lights we need because wow, that forest I found was absolutely tiny. Ooh, look, four right here. Definitely going to be coming back over here in the near future, but I think we can find our way back home right over here. And man, I need to find my way through this nether more easily. Ouch, that kind of hurt. I feel like the second I get an elytra, the nether to me, I don't remember anything. It's everything's up in the air as far as me being able to find my way around, but it looks like our doorway is right. Nailed it. Perfect. Quick nether expedition later, and we are all in. Look at that glow around this entire area. Oh my gosh, that is starting to look really, really amazing down here. I love how the ceiling gets a little dark from being so far away. 
And once we get rid of all the torches here in the center, it's going to be even more extreme. And oh my gosh, I'm so excited for this. Now, as one final thing to do today, I wanted to install the item filters for us so you all can get a better idea of what's going on here. We're going to start over in this corner. Actually, we'll start right here. What we need to do inside of these is you can bring in, I rename anything you want to any name you want, as long as it's something you're not planning on putting into the system. Then you basically put these guys right in here like that, and then you just need four of them going flat all the way across. And then you put a stack of whatever you want to filter in here. It's going to stack up to 41, and then everything else will start going down. I don't know why it does 41. It's something to do with the delay and the power of that coming off of the comparator right behind this thing. And that's how it works. Up on the screen now, you should see an image of the item filter system that I've been using. I just saved a thing like that to my desktop. So whenever I need to make something like this, I just have a picture that I can pull up and I know what blocks I need to place and where I need to place them because this is not stuff that I typically understand. So if you get stuck on redstone but want to be able to do some cool technical stuff like this, I would recommend having some sort of a system like that for yourself. For a little bit of a further test here for y'all, this is kind of what we would go with. And instead of having that andesite in here, we would have the dirt inside of here. And you'll see that that will get stuck at 41. And it does just like that. Now, if we take that stuff back out, we should see the rest of that right down in here. I don't want to store the dirt in there. The dirt's probably going to be going in some system right over here instead. But what we have set up is I've set up this is cobble, cobblestone, stone, andesite, granite, I believe, and then diorite. We should see some of that, some order of that inside of here. But I wanted to dump a bunch of the stuff in and just see if it's actually going to work for us today. That clicking sound back here is very good. If we rock really close to it, you'll see we're picking up the blocks as well. So those are being shot up way up high into the sky we'll go ahead and load those back in the system but hopefully that means they're going to start appearing down here soon and we've got some diorite down here in the chest now so that must mean most of those things are working which is absolutely awesome now it's the time of well i gotta set up the different filters going all the way around and figure out what is gonna go where but that is something that i think we're gonna deal with in the next episode my friends thank you all so very much for watching today's episode if you did enjoy click that like button down below subscribe if you're brand new and my friends i will catch you on the flip side